NES opponent's entirety, we only need a number two Phillips screwdriver. So flip that NES onto its underside and we'll be revealed six screws that we can just take out. Now the screw is taken out, we can just lift the lid straight off. There's nothing holding it in. And we'll need to take this metal shielding off. This is held in by seven screws around the perimeter. There are three on the right side near the RF module. And then rotating it onto its back, we got two more screws to take out. And finally on the far left side, we got two final screws to take out. Once those are removed, we can just lift this shielding right off. It can get stuck on a few things, but once you get it off, now we're gonna focus on the cartridge holder. Now, the only thing to note here is that there are three screws, a silver one in the middle and two gold ones on the outside. Note the order of those went in because the silver one is longer than the two gold ones. Now we can focus on the RF module in the top right. There are only two screws holding this in, and once they're taken out, the board is basically ready to come out. Lifting it up by the cartridge holder, you can see the only thing holding it in is actually the controller ports and the power switch. So we can just tug on those gently and they come right out. These ones are hidden under the bottom shield, but it's the same process. As you can see close up here, you just give them a gentle tug and they'll just come right out. Now we can take the bottom away and begin focusing on that cartridge holder that we just unscrewed. It'll be a bit tricky to get out, it's pretty well friction fit in with the cartridge slot. But once it's out, now we can take the cartridge slot out itself as well. This leaves us with just the barren board, so we can move the picture processing unit and the central processing unit. That's PPU and CPU. On the top side, they're labeled in white text, so luckily it's easy to identify which is which when we go to remove them. Now we're gonna be removing them one at a time so that we don't confuse which chip is which. As you can see here, I'm just laying down some flux with a metal spatula. I should probably use a syringe, but... And as you can see, I'm also using a desoldering gun. These are fairly cheap. This one right here is only $100 and you can get it on eBay. And I've been using it for several years. If you're interested in the review, I'll have it in the top right corner. But I mean, if you have a hacko or something like that, you can go ahead and use that too. It'll probably work better. Now I'm just double checking with these pliers to make sure I'm just wiggling the pins very gently to make sure that they're all free because I don't want to pull out any pads as I go to try to remove this. Also make sure you don't bend any pins as you try to push these back in later on. Now we've got a removable clip here that we're going to install just so that in future we can easily remove these or put them in. It's included in the kit, so might as well put them back in. And I'm lining up the notch where the white engraved notch is just so that we know exactly how to orient the CPU when we put it back in. To hold it in place, I'm holding it on the underside with my left hand and just soldering the two corners so that we can get it level, and then we can proceed to solder the rest. There might be a better technique if you have one, go ahead and share it in the comments, I'd be interested to know. I suppose you could also just hold it up against like a block of wood or something, something level with that while you're trying to solder it, and that would do it too. Now the process is essentially done, we just needed to redo the same steps for the CPU. It's basically the same thing, so I'm not going to really talk over it, I'm just going to fast forward through it here.
Now that we're coming to the end of the install for the CPU, we're going to start working on the interposers. These are basically just going to intercept the data between the CPU and the PPU chips and then send it over to the HDMI processor. What we're doing here is we're just lining up the dual male pins with the same number of pins on the NES. Um, if you miss one or you miscount and you have an extra one on one and a shorter one on the other, you can just break off that one and go ahead and install it separately. I did manage to do that on one of these. But as you can see here, we're lining up the male to male on the NES pins. And then so we got one already installed and we're going to do the other one on the other NES pin on the other side. So this will insert into that um, removable clip that we installed and then the CPU will go on top of this as you'll see in just a second. It doesn't matter really which one you pick just as long as they are the same one. So for this we picked NES pin and we're going to line these up and solder them in place. And as you can see here my soldering iron is getting kind of cold, the ceramic core on this is actually shattered and getting really, really cold and not heating up properly. I should get a new station, but uh, technical details, eh? Now we're going to do the same for the CPU. We're going to line those up one more time with the NES pin. So we know male to male, we're going to go right into the NES. Now we got the female pins to put in. This is where we'll plug the actual CPU and PPU into, respectively. Here you can see that I've missed one in just a minute here. Now when you're soldering these in, make sure that you don't bridge any of the tiny components on the inner ones. Um, if you do, it's going to be a bit of a nightmare to desolder those and make sure that nothing's bridged. So just take your time and get it started in. And now here's the two of them in the final state. We're ready to plug them right into the NES and get them going. So you can see they've actually nicely labeled the notch here so we know which way to align the CPU or PPU, whichever you're doing. I'm just going to go ahead and plug that in. And again, make sure that none of the pins are bent. You can see there's one bent right there. I did correct this later on. I didn't notice it while I was filming it. But uh, yeah. Now we're going to plug in the ribbon cable. The blue side should face the chips or the male end that plugs into the NES. That should be where the blue end faces. Slide that in, sort of hold it gently and then close the clasp. These clasps feel a little bit cheap and I found that they almost, they're definitely going to break if you're not gentle with them, so be careful. Now when we go to install the PPU here, you may notice that this capacitor is in the way. That's not a problem. We're going to have to just remove it from the underside and then put it onto its side, as you can see here. Just sort of bend the pins and solder it back into place, and it will work perfectly fine once we go to insert it. And you can see that PPU is still kind of crooked because I still hadn't noticed that that one pin was bent during filming this. But don't worry, I did correct it. Now this post here has to be taken out. Um, unfortunately, I'm using these terrible tin snips, which can't even cut plastic, so I decided to cut and sand it off off camera because that was a miserable tool to use. Now we're going to give this HDMI board some power so you can solder it up to the voltage regulator on the RF module. And just solder it to the plus and minus in the top left corner of the board. And if you're like me, when you went to make this whole work, you just dremeled it out like a caveman and then 3D printed a plate so that you didn't have to be bothered precision dremeling. Now you can fire up a test, and as you can see on that small little uh, HDMI LED panel in the back, it is working. So we're ready to reassemble it and give it the final go. The assembly is exactly the same as we did in the forward play, except that we don't want to include the bottom metal shielding as it will no longer fit. You may even have to do some case modifications to the bottom if you find anything else that's sort of interfering, but generally, I hope you found this somewhat interesting and uh, give it a try. It's, pr it's probably the easiest HDMI mod you can go for. Anyways, see you next time.